morning, everybody. Lovely to see you all today. I um, was trying to get started by 11.15, but haven't quite made it. Um, it would be lovely if we could start our services at 11.15, because it is an 11.15 service. But hey, I do, I do get it. But, you know, yes, we did try. Um, anyway, a couple of notices. Um, unfortunately, the quiz night is sold out. So if you haven't already got your place for that, you're too late, I'm afraid. Um, if any spaces do um, become available, we will let you know. Um, we do have cream teas coming up on Saturday the 20th of May from 2 till 4 in the old school building. Tickets are £5 for that. And you can see Jill, who's over here, um, it's always a really good cream tea, so I really think you should go and eat lots of scones. Um, the food bank is still really, really, really quite depleted right now. Um, if anybody can just put a little something else in their bag when they go shopping, that would be marvellous. Um, we've got boxes, a box in the hallway out here. Um, you can take it directly down to the Jubilee Church. And I think there's also a box, um, there's a collection thing in Sainsbury's now for bags of food as well. So if you can help with that, that will be amazing. And the final notice is Cornerstone is still on tomorrow and there's bacon butters. So if anybody hasn't been to Cornerstone because... They normally work on a Monday or have other, there's school on a Monday or whatever. Go along and have a bacon butty and have a chat. You might get to meet somebody from our church household that you don't normally get to chat with. So that would be really lovely as well. Um, I think that's all the notices for now. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Tim. Um, we're going to have one worship song to begin with, then the children will go out, and then we'll have another two worship songs, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, everybody. Morning everyone, why don't we stand up together? How's everyone doing? Good? You ready to worship the Lord? With gusto? Yeah. <laughs> Never heard that before. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Father, we just want to come into your presence right now with the sound of singing. Lord, we want to bless your name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Let's bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And 
day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more bless the Lord Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Lord, I worship Your holy God, I worship your holy name. Okay, so is there anybody that wants to go out for crash? Hey. Okay. Sorry. Come on, Jill's got lots of lovely, fun things for you to do out there. Lots of fun things. <laughs> I'll let them go out but Father God I thank you for all of the uh, all of the leaders and all of the people that help with all of the children and youth work in this place Father of course we want all of the children and all of the youth to have so much fun and of course that's important but most of all Father I pray that all of the children and the youth will in the time that they have with the leaders just just let them hear something to, to cling on to, something to kind of grow their faith, Father. Yes, let them have fun, but let their faith be growing in this time. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, Dan. You turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you not like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Sing water you turned into iron Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you. Our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, 
And he could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what could stand against And if our God is for us Then he could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what could stand against Then what could stand against Let's sing our God Greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then He could ever stop us. And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then He could ever stop us. And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? stand again mm, our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome and power our God our God Why don't we just bring to God those things that we're struggling with. Just bring them to mind. Why don't we just close our eyes and just bring those things that are really wearing us down. Those those worries that are troubling you today. Why don't we just bring them to the Lord right now. It's really powerful words that we're singing. Do we really believe that our God is greater, our God is stronger, and that he's higher than anything else? God is for us, not against us. And as a result, who can stand against us? Such a comfort to know, isn't it? That God's on our side. Let's just sing the chorus one more time. And our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God, yes our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. Receive our adoration, Jesus, Lamb of God. Receive our adoration.
we choose to leave it all behind and turn our eyes towards the prize the upward call of God in Christ you have our hearts God take our lives receive our adoration Jesus, Lamb of God, receive our adoration, how wonderful you are, receive, receive our adoration, Jesus, Lamb of God. Receive our adoration, how wonderful you are. And every soul you saved sings out, everything you made resounds, all creation standing. Lifting up your name We're caught up in the angel song We're gathered to your ancient throne Children in a father's arms Shouting out your praise Receive our adoration, Jesus, Lamb of God. Receive our adoration, how wonderful you are. Receive our adoration. Jesus, Lamb of God, receive our adoration, how wonderful you are, how wonderful you are, how wonderful you are. Lift our eyes to you, how wonderful you are, how wonderful you are. Yes, Lord Jesus, we just choose to leave it all behind like we've just been singing, Lord God, and we just focus our eyes on you, King Jesus. Lord, you are awesome, you are powerful, you are holy. Lord, when we, when we focus on you, Jesus, uh, put our priority on you, Lord God, as we worship you today, Lord, then all earthly things just fade away because you are greater. So, Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this time, Lord God. Thank you, Tim. Lovely. Have a seat, everybody. Okay, so in what has uh, become a tradition, well, you really call two weeks for a tradition, not really, but hey, there you go. We can, I can say it. Um, just thought we'd have a little bit of time now just, just for prayer for each other, basically. Um, Tris is going to do his lovely job of running around with the mic because even though Tim's not here, I know how much he loves doing this. Um, just something that's really on my heart today is it's absolutely wonderful that we pray for things, for what we want and for where we need Jesus to step right, right into our lives. But we can also be thankful in our prayer as well. So if there's anything that anybody wants to share, any answers to prayer that have happened recently as well, I think this is a 
a really good opportunity to lift each other up as well. So, so yes, let's take our prayers and petitions to God. We absolutely need to do that, but let's also give thanks. And if there's anything that anybody would like to share, then would, that would be wonderful. So, has anybody got anything? Let's really hope someone does have something. <laughs> Closer. Um, I would like to be thankful for the people that walk alongside us. Um, because even when it's rubbish, there are some amazing people who walk alongside us and who are praying for us. So, um, just as I don't think I could do life without God, um, I couldn't do it without the people who are doing that with me either. So, shall I pray? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Um, so Lord I'm just so grateful for the people that you put in our pathway closer we know that we have um, you in our lives Lord um, but the people who help us through um, are so important in the you know our respective journeys so I thank you for putting the right people in our paths um, often when we don't expect them to be the right people. Um, and yeah, let's just be grateful for the relationship that we have with you, but also with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else? Alice? Well, last week, as some of you will know, um, I couldn't walk. I had a stick, and um, I had prayer from Jane, um, you, and um, my stick was on hook over the pew there, and it flew off and it went right across there, as much as to say, as much as to say, you don't need that, and I've never used it since. So thank you, all of you. Do you want to pray into that quickly? Thank you, God. <laughs> I'll broaden it as well. Um, <clears throat> thank you, God, so much for your health and healing. Thank you, God. In fact, if I can just take the opportunity, thank you, God, for anyone here who's um, moved forward through prayer in any way, including in health and healing, and where there are people in our community, Lord, who need health and healing for you. And I think we can all think of plenty of those people or are those people ourselves. In Jesus' name, Lord, would you meet us and come close to us and heal us. And where there are ways that we also need to move forward or can move forward to help that process, show us those things and let us do those things. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else? Yes, a bit of both. So um, my dad had his operation on Thursday, and thank you for all the prayers. Um, for those of you who are not on, on the WhatsApp, he said he felt bathed in prayer, and so that's really lovely to hear. Saying that, he's struggling with the after effects of being under general anaesthetic at the moment, feeling quite poorly and sick with that. So okay just to pray for that. Thank God that he's been brought this far. Oh God, I just thank you for having Dad in your hand over the last couple of days, particularly and for the prayer warriors that have been behind him. And thank you that he's experienced that really tangibly. I just ask now, just as he's in the ward and he starts his recovery, that you would just take away the nausea and the sickness and you would strengthen him and my mum and that you would get him home pronto. Amen. I uh, just want to thank God for a couple of conversations I've had with um, a lady in our community um, who's not a Christian, um, and she's just brought up in conversation about how can you believe in a God when your mum died and with everything going on with Luke. Uh, and it's just been really natural. It hasn't been forced, and I've just been able to share with her um, I do struggle with unanswered prayer, and I do have my rants at God, but actually... 
I can't imagine not having walked the journey that I've been on in the last couple of years without him there by my side and knowing that he's there for me. Um, and I think, well, I guess I'm just praying that it has a real impact on her. The fact she's brought it up twice. Um, she lost her faith when a child in her family died very suddenly. And I think it's kind of really shaken her, what the faith that she had, and she's kind of turned against God. So just want to pray, really, that God would be moving in her life. I'll just pray for that. Father, I thank you for this lady, and I just thank you that you've got your hand on her life. And Father, I just pray that you would move in her life, Father, all the unanswered questions and the anger um, that she feels for the loss that she's had. Father, I pray that you would um, not necessarily bring her answers, because sometimes we don't ever get that, but Father, that you would just move in her life and that she would... Um, be able to see you as the loving God that you are. Amen. Is anybody else? Anybody else? Katie? Um, I wanted to go a bit further afield and to pray for um, countries where at the moment they're in war and things are going on. In particular, what's come to, into my heart recently is um, Yemen and Sudan um, seeing, you know, pictures of children just literally starving to death and it's really hard um, and I'm just so thankful that we, although we have our challenges here, we have a community who are looking after our, each other um, and they don't have that and I just pray that that can reach for them as well, help them So um, Lord you just heard Katie's words um, we are thankful for your provision in um, our lives, whether that be relationship and community, uh, practical things, um, uh, employment and food, <clears throat> but even though things are difficult um, and situations arise for us individually, we can rely on each other. So Lord, we lift up all of those countries where um, conflict have has torn lives apart, where there is famine, where there is um, uh, yeah, armed violence, uh, where vulnerable people are even more vulnerable. Um, we just pray your blessing and your provision in those places, Lord. We pray that people might feel your presence tangibly, um, but also practically. We thank you for charities, aid workers, um, the people from various countries who are working in your name to um, provide uh, safety and security. Thank you for um, your provision across the world. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody else? No? Um, I think praying together like this is really powerful and it's really wonderful. Don't leave your prayers just for today, though. You know, just lean in, you know, and just, you know, I'm, you know, Father God, I just, I just want to thank you, actually, Father, that you walk beside us. Whatever challenges we have, whatever we face, nothing is too much for you. And we just need to lean in when things are tough and not forget to give you thanks when things are good. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I'm now going to ask Rebecca to come up. And she's going to um, talk. I'm going to quickly pray for Rebecca. Father God, I, I thank you for this wonderful lady, Father. I thank you um, not just for um, what she's going to be doing now, but I thank you for the conversations that we have on a regular basis, not, not just about the church here, but you know, just about things in our own lives. Um, and I thank you for the sounding board that she is, Father, and for the, the wisdom and wise words that, that Rebecca uses sometimes. Not all of the time, but sometimes. <laughs> but, but, Father, I just, I just pray this morning that as Rebecca speaks, that um, she will speak into your heart and um, that you will leave here this morning kind of just with, with another seed planted that will grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you wise words only sometimes I'll work on it no, I'm far 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 from perfect um, if we could have our
presentation. That would be great. We have a wobbly lectern as well. That's going to bother me. Um, so last week, we heard from Simon um, when he talked about giving thanks. And the week before, we heard from Tim when he talked about lifting up our hearts. And so today we're going through the continuation of the communion prayer. So in our 9.30 service and in this service, we're using the communion prayer as a series, this kind of half term. Um, so if you would click to the next slide. Uh, slide. Um, in thinking about this part of the prayer, we're looking at holy, holy, holy. And this is the extract, and I should have used a bigger font, sorry, um, so I'll read it to you because you might not be able to see it. Um, the part of the prayer is, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So the first part of that, the first four lines there is called the Sanctus. And the second part that's in brackets is called the Benedictus. And just do a little bit of history and Latin for the morning anyway. So that's good. But it got me to thinking about actually what is holiness? What is being holy? Um, so I'm going to ask you to think about that because I'm going to ask questions just as a warning. Um, what is it? to be holy or for holiness or what, what do you think of? I've been listening to a podcast recently called Sacred or The Sacred and the presenter always asks, what is sacred to you? And she interviews all sorts of people uh, from all sorts of faith backgrounds and none, and, but it's what people hold sacred. So I'm asking you the same question, what is holy for you? I'll tell you about this first give you some time to think. So this is um, an image or a painting uh, from the Encounter Chapel in Magdala, where Mary Magdalene came from in Israel. It's just on the Sea of Galilee, and they have built this most incredible church, as well as it being an archaeological site. And this painting probably takes up from that side chapel all the way back, that whole wall, it's huge. And it is incredible. And it is of the picture, or it depicts the um, story from the gospel where the unclean woman touches Jesus' garment and is made whole. She's been ostracized from her community. She hadn't been able to go to synagogue because she was impure and unclean. And if you remember the story, Jesus is being jostled by the crowd and the woman can't get close enough, so she just touches his garment and he feels that healing leave him as well. I think that's holy. What about you? So what, what does holy mean for you? Pure? Yeah. Yeah. Total belief. I wondered whether it had associations with a place or a person. going to love the next slide.
Okay. Let's, if we could go on to the next slide. This is a slide I got to use my pictures from Israel. Yay! Um, so the top left, I thought about places being holy. Yeah, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go Israel, Palestine. Let's see. Then I'll tell you what I thought. So the top left is the Basilica of the Annunciation in Nazareth. Um, that is where Gabriel came to tell Mary that she was going to have a baby. And top middle is the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem when, where, Mary did have a baby. These are all, you know, it may or may not be that actual place but this is where it's commemorated. Top right is the baptismal site of Jesus on the Jordan. I'm not going to really talk about the minefields that you have to drive through to get there, or the soldiers that are patrolling. I'm not going to talk about those. But behind that chapel there is the river. It's really muddy and really brown, and I wouldn't want to be baptised there. What can you do? Bottom left is Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where three Abrahamic faiths, so Christianity, Judaism, Islam, consider this to be a really holy place. It's supposed to be where the first temple that we read about in the Bible was built. That wall on the bottom left there is the Wailing Wall, where the Jews pray and put their prayers in the in the wall. And on the top is the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the site of much violence. Bottom middle is a church called Domin Dominus Blavit. If anyone speaks, well, speaks Latin, who speaks Latin? Uh, apologies for my pronunciation. But it translates as Jesus wept, and that is on the Mount of Olives where Jesus was supposed to have wept for Lazarus. And then bottom right is um, part of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That chapel underneath is supposed to be where Jesus' tomb was. All supposed to be massively holy. If I'm honest, I didn't feel that they were particularly holy. In the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the jostling happened. You couldn't move for people. It wasn't that holy, in my opinion. The baptismal site, I couldn't think of, I was so excited, so excited. But it wasn't that holy. So, for me, holy isn't a place. Have the next slide, please. So then I thought about people who might have been holy. We've got Moses. Also, I think, is it Charlton Heston? Archbishop Welby. Mm. Controversial, not sure. He might be holy because of his ordination to the priesthood. Mm, not sure. Mother Teresa, again, a bit controversial for some people. You know, undoubtedly, she did some amazing things from a charitable perspective, but again, controversial. And the top left is a picture of Mary Magdalene, taken from The Chosen, apparently highly recommended. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but again, somebody who, you know, from a historical perspective, there have been so many rumours, so many stories about her, who was she, blah, blah, blah. But she was actually the first person to see the risen Jesus. So I think, you know, fairly much up there. But it also made me think, people aren't really holy, because they're people. So then we go to the next slide, which is the first reading for today. And it's really small, and I'm so sorry. I'm going to read it. Actually, the formal uh, verses were one to four, but I the artistic license and went to seven instead. So it was in the year King Uzziah died, 
that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were eight mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips and live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. So it doesn't take much work. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Confused me then. So it doesn't take much work to see what the picture represents. So they are the seraphim. Um, and the, the red-winged creatures um, mentioned only in this part of the Bible. So a seraph um, in the singular, a seraphim in the plural, those Hebrew speakers. Um, it's a, you know, a seraph is a fiery angel and they're surrounding God as he sits on his throne. They serve as God's agents of purification, which is why I carried on to verse 7 because they are enabling Isaiah to become pure by putting the coal to his lips. In the earlier verses, the seraphim are repeatedly proclaiming God's supreme holiness and glory. They're not addressing God and telling him he's holy. They're addressing each other. I thought that was really interesting, that difference, is that you know God knew he was holy. He, he didn't need that. But the seraphim are telling each other. And I think that was interesting from our perspective. You know, We can remind each other that God is God. And the word holy means being set apart and considered to be sacred. And then I got to thinking about the holy, 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 the three times, and why they're repeating it continually. And it might reflect the Hebrews verse that talks about God's eternal nature being yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it could be a reflection of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it just still remains that the seraphim are praising God. And because there's no such thing as time in the way that we think about time, in heaven, this is going on. The seraphim are doing this all the time, for time immemorial. So it made me think, Maybe I don't always think of God as being as holy as he is. Maybe I've kind of dumbed it down a bit from my perspective. And then the next reading for today is from Matthew. And this was a reading from a few weeks ago on Palm Sunday. And it's the story of Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem before his trial, crucifixion and resurrection. And in it, we can see the, prayer, the words mentioned in the communion prayer. I'm going to read it for you. So the disciples went and they did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks in the, on the road while others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So I was thinking, oh, the people who put the liturgy together and the, the readings of the year, why, what were they trying to say? And yeah, I get it, but you know, the words are in the communion prayer, but what does that really mean? And so then I thought about what the difference was. Who was praising who in these two different passages? So here, there's no mention of angels. It's us, people. We're worshipping Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem. But they still kind of didn't really know who he was because he'd said he was the son of God, but there was so much controversy and, you know, do we really believe him? Do we not really believe him? It was a journey, for sure. But the people are crying out to Jesus. It's an acclamation. It's positive. It's recognition of his fulfillment of the prophecy and the fact that he is the Messiah. He is coming in the name of the Lord and he is the embodiment of holiness. So Hosanna means save us now. It's a prayer, it's a plea, but it's also joyful. It's a cry of salvation, but also a cry of thanks. It's rejoicing. It's as if the people are saying, at last, salvation is here. We've waited so long, but it's finally here. And we use it all the time. Hosanna, we use, you know, in worship songs, in prayer, all the time. But I don't know that we really think about it. Again, you know, with God's holiness, I think we kind of dumb it down to our own level because it's so huge. We can't really comprehend it. So with the people of Jerusalem proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah, they are recognizing the embodiment of God and they're praising him. So in the two readings, we've got two different contexts, one in heaven, Isaiah's vision of heaven and the seraphim, and one of Jesus in Jerusalem. Two different contexts, two different beings praising God and yet both recognizing his holiness and singing his praises. And then I got to thinking, how does that work? What's the difference, the kind of the timeline? So the next slide has what I thought was kind of the timeline of how holiness is depicted. So in the first picture, we've got the Moses and the burning bush. So Moses, for sure, was in a holy place because God said from the bush, take off your sandals, you're standing on holy ground. And it was dangerous, and it was confusing, and it was scary. And I thought, actually, that is one of the ways that people can feel about God. You know, it's confusing, and it's dangerous, and it's scary. It's really hard to let yourself go and to recognize God's role in your life. And Moses was scared, and he didn't understand, but he was faithful. And so he was in the presence of God in the burning bush. And then in the second picture, it's a picture of the Holy of Holies. So in the Old Testament, you know, they would carry around the ark, they would build the temple and only the most professional holy priests were allowed to go anywhere near the holy of holies and everybody else would be on the outside and would praise God but there was a distance you know physical distance only certain people were allowed there and that's not really the God that I know because he doesn't differentiate between people and then the third one at the bottom is moving into the New Testament, 
but that's a picture of Zechariah being visited by the angel when he was in the Holy of Holies doing his priestly duties and the angel came and told him that he and Elizabeth were going to be parents to John the Baptist and he didn't believe them, the angel, so he was struck dumb. And I thought, wow, that's the power, the holiness of God, but there's still that kind of distance And then we get Jesus, who is the embodiment of holiness. He is the, well, he's God. And he came to us to allow that holiness to be spread, you know, and he said he was the living water. I kind of really like the analogy of the holiness coming from him being the living water that flows out So whereas kind of in the previous pictures, people went to God, but Jesus came to us. And so there's that kind of outward flowing of holiness. And then, of course, Jesus, we we know the story. Jesus was crucified, resurrected, he ascended to heaven, but he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit brings that holiness to us well, now, every moment of every day, um, you know, how incredible, what a gift that holiness is. And if we could move on to the final slide, I think this is one of my favorite depictions of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is often a dove. And we know that the Holy Spirit was at the beginning. You know, the the Spirit was present at creation. And probably before, but my silly human brain doesn't get that. So I have to say that was the beginning. And the Spirit was present throughout all of those previous pictures, in all of those previous places. You know, the Spirit was present when I was being jostled at the Holy Sepulchre and couldn't wait to get out because it was too busy and it wasn't holy. But the Spirit was present. And because the Spirit kind of forms part of that holy trinity, that holiness is with us and is brought to us. So going right back to the beginning with the communion prayer... We remember Jesus' sacrifice for us. He was the embodiment of that holiness that Isaiah had seen. And we can see it, and we can be part of it. But I would just encourage us to recognize holiness. I, like confession here, I probably downplay Jesus a little bit because he's my friend. And it says, that, you know, the Bible says that he's your friend. Um and I'll have a chat, and I might, you know, instead of phoning somebody, I might have a conversation with Jesus. But I probably downplay his holiness, because I know it, but I just, I'm human. So for me, that part of the communion prayer is just recognizing God's holiness, that holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. And that's my reflection. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the fly distracting um, and getting on people's nerves. But just, I don't know, let's sit and think for a minute about God's holiness. Thank you so much, Rebecca. That was, um, it's really interesting, okay, um, because we had the same readings at the 9.30 service this morning as well. And I think what is really interesting, having heard both talks, is everybody reads the Bible, 
studies the word and every, there's something for everybody and you take from it what's right in, for your heart in that moment and and I just love the reflections that Rebecca gave us then and it's certainly given me things to think about actually moving forward through today so and more days so I'm going to pass back over to Tim now and hopefully at some point the children will come back I'm um, just going to um, take our collection up at this point. Um, there is the card reader over there as well, if anybody would prefer to do it that way. Thank you. Let me stand again. Oh 
God, how I need you. Thank you. That was lovely. Um, now, does anybody from Sunday Club or youth want to come and talk about what they've done today at all? Do you want to come and show us? Because sometimes you, you go and have do all of your stuff and we don't know what you've been doing and it would be really nice for people to hear. So if anyone does want to come up, you can... You've all got flags. Wow, I'm going to hand the mic over. Who wants the mic? We were doing it about uh, the king's jubilee, the coronation, um, and we made flags for it. Um, and we were doing like crowns and what would you be what would you do if you were a king or a queen and then we had like a tiny party um we also looked a, um we also looked um a video at king charles and we were given well sweets cupcakes <laughs> Sweets. Oh, and um, King Charles will be given all the crown jewels. Um, and we made we made Union Jack flags to to represent the to represent the England and his coronation. Wow, it sounds like they had loads of fun. Fantastic. Right, well, Jill, anything from you guys, or are you all, no, we're all done, all done. We're all done. Do oh, you want to come and show what you made? You want to come and show me? No, no, <laughs> okay. Right, well, all that's left to say is everybody go and have a really peaceful day. Do something fun with those that you love and just kind of know that you're loved all the time.